Now, when it comes to starting up our Docker containers, especially using Docker Compose, we can run into some potential issues. And that is when we spin up both our node container as well as our Mongo container, we don't actually know the exact order that these will get spun up on, right? Docker is just going to bring them up at the same time or relatively close to the same time. And that can lead to issues because if our node container spins up first, uh, it's going to run this code right here to try and connect to our database. However, if our database is not up, it's going to throw an error and then crash our application. So we need a way to kind of tell Docker to load up our Mongo instance, our Mongo container first, so that we can ensure that when it's up and running, only then does our node container connect to it. And Docker Compose has a depends on field that we can use. So if we go into our Docker Compose.yaml, we'll use the shared one in this case, because we would want the same behavior, whether it's in our production or our development environment. And under our node app service, we'll say uh, depends on, depends underscore on, and then we have to pass in the name of the service that we depend on. So we'll do a uh, slash or, or dash, and then the name of the service. So in this case, Mongo. And so what this is saying is that because our node app service depends on Mongo, we are going to start our Mongo container first. All right, so that kind of helps us. So let's tear everything down. And then let's bring everything back up. All right, now we can see that um, our Mongo container was started first and our node app was started second. And uh, keep in mind, uh, you know, if you run this, you know, enough times, you can confirm that it's always going to be the Mongo container first because it sees that our node app is dependent on our Mongo service. However, this still does not technically fix our issue because the only thing Docker does is it spins up this container first. It has no idea whether Mongo has fully initialized. It has no idea if the Mongo database is actually up and running. It just spins up the container. Right? It doesn't do any checks to verify that our Mongo database is up and listening for connections. So despite the fact that we have depends on, uh, it doesn't necessarily solve our issue. It helps a little bit, but once again, our application, um, you know, we could end up catching it where the Mongo container is up and running, um, but Mongo itself is still down and hasn't initialized and our node app is ready to connect to it. Right, And then at that point, our application crashes. And so ultimately, there's nothing Docker can really do in this case or nothing specifically that Docker Compose can do. Uh, maybe if you have an orchestrator, you can kind of work something out. But at the end of the day, you shouldn't rely on Docker or your orchestrator to handle that. Instead, you want to implement some sort of logic in your application to handle this scenario where your Mongo database isn't up and running before your application starts. And so usually that involves, uh, you know, if you try and connect and you're unable to connect to it, you want to keep retrying until you're able to successfully connect to it. Now, Mongoose in this case will actually try for 30 seconds uh, automatically for you. After 30 seconds, you'll crash out. Um, but for 30 seconds, it will just keep trying and trying and trying. And that's what we want. So it's great that Mongoose has this out of the box. But I just want to make sure that you guys understand that ultimately, you need to implement some sort of logic in your applications to ensure that you can handle this scenario. And I'm going to show you a, you know, as an example of what something that you could do. And I'm not saying this is best practice. It most certainly is not. It's probably not the best way to handle this, but I just want to show you how we could somehow implement some sort of logic in our application to keep retrying until Mongo is up and running. So let's go back to our index.js. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a function. And I'm going to call this uh, connect with retry. And I'm going to take this mongoose method right here. I'm going to drag it right into my function. And then under the catch section right here, I'm going to remove this. Uh, first of all, actually, I'll keep the console.log. I don't know why I removed that. Um, but then if we error out for whatever reason, I mean, ideally, we should check to see if it's because we could not connect to the server. But let's just assume because it's trying to connect that any error we get is because we couldn't connect to it. We'll say set timeout, and then we'll call this same exact function. So we'll do connect with retry, and then we'll just say after five seconds. So what's going to happen is uh, we're going to call this function when we start our application, uh, and then it's going to run. It's going to try and connect, and if we can't connect to it, 
what we'll do is we'll wait five seconds. So that's what the purpose of the set timeout. We'll wait five seconds and then we'll just call connect with retry. So we'll just call this function again and then we'll try and connect. And then we'll do the same thing. We'll wait five seconds and just keep trying this. So this is going to loop forever until we can finally hit this then statement, right? Which is when we successfully connect to it and then we can break out of this function. Uh, so that's just an example of how you would implement something within your application. I'm not saying it's best practice. I'm sure there's something, there's some negative aspect as to the way I've implemented this and maybe it's not best practice. I'm just here to try and kind of sell home the point that you need to make sure your application handles the logic. Don't rely on an orchestrator. Don't rely on Docker or Docker Compose because none of them can truly guarantee you that your Mongo database is fully up and running uh, before your application starts. Make sure your application is intelligent enough to handle that scenario. And um, so the last thing that we got to do is we got to call that function. So over here we just do connect with retry. Let's save that. And now to actually test this out, uh, first of all, let's do a Docker. Uh, first of all, let's tear everything down. And now I'm going to show you a command that we have or an option that we have with our Docker Compose up. So if we run up again with the dash V, uh, if we just run this like this, it's going to start all of our containers, all of our services. However, we can tell Docker Compose to only start up specific services. So in this case, we would want to bring up our, um, uh, we would want to bring up uh, just our node application. So if I do a dash dash help, you can see at the top, we can just provide our service names. Uh, where is it? I think it's somewhere here. It's listed somewhere here if you check it, but it'll list out, uh, you can specify just the services you want to start. So if I do, uh, and first of all, that shouldn't be dash V, that should be dash D, sorry. So here I can type in node dash app, right? And so that's just coming from our service name. And so this should start just our node application. So if I hit that, we see a little bit of an issue, right? It started our Mongo container. So why exactly did it start our Mongo container? Well, that ultimately comes down to the fact that we use this depends on flag. So because this service depends on Mongo, right? It's going to start Mongo no matter what. So let's tear this back down and I'll show you how we can start just our node application. Now here we do up dash D uh, and the node dash app. And let's do a dash dash help. And let me do that before the name of our service. So here. And there should be a specific flag and that is no depth right here. So that says don't start linked services or it's basically saying you don't need to start the dependencies. So when we start up our node application, despite the fact that we depend on Mongo, it will not start up all of any of our dependencies. So that's the exact flag that we want. So let's hit an up arrow, remove that, and then the dash dash, I already forgot what it was. No, no depths. And then we want to call our service name, which is no dash app. All right, so now it's going to start just our node application. We do a Docker PS just to confirm. Perfect. And then let's do a Docker logs. And then we'll call this. And then dash F. So let's take a look at our application and let's see what happens. And I can't remember if I did a save all. I mean, let's just do a save. There we go. Okay, so we can see that Mongo tried to connect, right? And it said connection timed out. All right. And so, uh, you know, by default, I think it Mongo waits like 30 seconds again afterwards or something like that. So let's see uh, if Mongo, if my for loop, actually it wasn't a for loop, but if my repeating function works. So we should ideally see the same exact error message when it tries to reconnect in a few seconds. And there we go. So uh, I don't know if you guys saw that flash before you, but uh, it spit it out the error once again. So this confirms that um, my application is continuously trying to connect to Mongo. 
So let's bring up our Mongo container now. So we can do a Docker Compose up. Uh, and then here, we can remove all of these flags and just bring up our Mongo service. And so now if I run the, the Docker logs again for our node application, uh, when it tries to retry once again, it should then successfully connect. And there we go. So now we can see that we've successfully connected. And this confirms that our node application is intelligent enough to handle a scenario where our Mongo database is not up and running uh, at a specific moment in time. So it will just continuously retry over and over and over and over again until the database is finally up and running.